Well, good morning. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Good morning. I love a lively crowd in the morning. Welcome to Bringley Mountain Baptist Church as, uh, as we're a loving church that wants to reach out to everyone, pray for them, and love them. Uh, got a few things in our announcements this morning. If you're a visitor, please tear out that portion in your announcement and write down your name or prayer or whatever you guys want to do on, on that piece of paper. We try to reach out to everyone in the church. Uh, we have a children's meeting after church this morning. We'll be gathering here after church for the up-and-coming egg hiding and other things. Other thing that we need to know, if you can, if you get an opportunity, not only are we taking candy and eggs, we're taking little prizes because we'll be doing a point that if they open up, get different points and so many points, we're going to give them a prize. So if you get an opportunity, buy a couple of little prizes, put them out there in the foyer with the rest of the eggs. Did I do that right? Okay, we're having a, uh, all children's leaders are asked to stay. I did that part. Thanks for all the donations and everything that you guys have given back there. We're doing the plastic eggs. If you can get the empty plastic eggs, we need more of those to do the, to do the egg hunt that's coming up for the children. Please note that Wednesday Bible study, this is important, that we've changed our time that now it starts at uh, 6 a.m. to 6.45, 6 p.m. to 6.45. I want you here early. 6.45, 6 p.m. to 6.45, I'm sorry. My wife has been on me all morning. I'm nervous, I'm sorry. Uh, that We're having that for our, for our Sunday school or our Wednesday night service. Uh, we're doing that to help out the choir because now we're got, we're doing the choir and the singing and that you're invited to that too on on Wednesday night. We're doing that after our Sunday or our Wednesday night service. Okay, and Joy, we're having really something important this afternoon. No kids, no matches, no lighters, please. I'm trying. It's just a campfire. It's not burned down. We're having a Gravity Youth campfire this afternoon. Enjoy a campfire, hamburgers, hot dogs, s'mores, kickball. Y'all, there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of stuff for kids. Yay! Uh, our youth and our families are all invited. Everybody's invited this evening. It's going to start at 5 p.m. And if you have any questions, please contact Clay. He'll fill you in on all the s'mores and the hot dogs and the hamburgers and all of that. And big campfire. That's not a fire. We're going to make a big campfire. You guys all come out at, at, at 5 p.m. this afternoon. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for all, everything you've already provided for us, the blessings of this campfire, the, the eggs and everything you give us, Lord. Now comes the time, Father, that, that, that everyone here has at least spoken or something in their heart. Come down and help us out this morning. Forgive us where we failed you. Get us back to the church with all them things we need. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is it the birthday lunch? Uh-huh. We got the women's birthday lunch next Thursday. Is it next th Thursday week to be April the 7th? Uh, you're, you're more than invited at 11.30 a.m. Please come up here. We're having the women's birthday luncheon next week, Thursday the 7th. Yes, ma'am.
join with again. We'll continue our worship with Rock of Ages.
together. This is going to be our fellowship time. We're going to sing one verse of I'll Fly Away Together, and then we're going to take a few minutes to greet one another. And while we're doing that, we'd ask all the children to exit through the back doors into the lobby, and then they'll be taken to Children's Church over in the nursery wing. All right, is that all I'm supposed to say? All right, here we go. I'll fly away.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this day, Lord. Now that we come to the time of breaking of the bread and breaking of your word, Lord, to bring it to someone in your house that, that has something on their heart today, Father, that you can bring that freshness back. Prick their hearts, Father. Hide Brother Milan behind the cross as he brings his word. Bring them boldly, Lord. Bring them to us the way you would share that with us, Lord. Forgive us where we failed you. Get us back here safely. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you open your Bibles and join me this morning in God's Word, the Gospel of John, chapter 9. The Gospel of John, chapter 9. Uh, what a joy it is to be in God's house today. It's good to look out and see each one of you here that's joined us here today. Uh, God's got a lot of great things for each and every one of us, and we're excited for that. I, I was excited to look up here and see a choir here this morning. And uh, wasn't that wonderful? You know, that I can say that was my first here. And that was great job. They did a great job. Thank you, Pam, for letting them. Let's appreciate them. Not only that, I don't want to say one other thing. That may have been the first, but next week, if you'll join them, that'll be the first that you was in the choir, okay? So we'd love to fill that choir room, uh, that choir loft up here up and, and be able to just lift up our voices. You know, choirs has kind of got to be a, a thing of the past, but I, I love choirs. I mean, I, I think they're, uh, they're wonderful. I think they help... Uh, Lay the foundation for God's Word to come up, and I appreciate them coming. And, and you'd be praying about maybe God uh, using you also in that ministry. Uh, there's places for everybody to get plugged into. There's places that God wants to use you. I don't want to be a, a spectator. I want to be a participator, and I hope that that's your heart's uh, bleed and pleasure as well. So here in the Gospel of John, let me read real quickly just a few verses. And as Jesus passed by. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work, as long as I am in the world. I am the light of the world. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay to the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Oh, what a wonderful uh, message here today. A wonderful message that comes from the Lord. It, it, it starts in the very beginning of, of the Bible. It talks about how that the world was that form and void, and darkness was upon the, uh, the face of the deep. And he said that he said, let there be light. And he was the light. And when light came into this world, it brought things back into order. It brought things back where it belonged. And I believe the Lord today wants to put us where we belong in our relationship with him in this world in which we walk in. It said in the very first passage, and Jesus passed by. Woo, you ever heard that song, Oh, what a difference when Jesus passed by? Oh, what a difference it made in my life. When Jesus passed by. This morning, when Jesus passes by, what a difference he can make in each and every single life here today. He can make a difference. Not only can he make a difference, he wants to make a difference. What is God's will this morning is to make a difference in people's lives, that their lives are empty, their lives have no hope. If you'll notice there was a man that he noticed. He saw him. He was blind. He was blind from his birth. I thought, I thought about being blind. You know, there's a lot of blindness in this world today. Now, I want you to understand when I say blindness. A lot of people think, seem to think they can see, but they really can't see because Satan has blinded their eyes. There was one man, and I know there's a lot of blind people back in the days of Jesus, but this day he chose to touch his life. 
and Jesus passes by here today, I wonder if he looks at you and says, I want to touch that life. I want to make a difference in that life. That's what he did here in this passage. He saw the man. He'd been that way all of his life. He's never saw in his life. He didn't know what it was like to see. So I want to talk about this great miracle today. I want to talk about a great miracle. It had a lot of things. It cost this man a lot. But it was important that he was able to see. I'm going to talk about the cure for just a minute. This man is a picture of lost people. This man is a picture of everybody that ever came into this world. He was a picture of a lost person. He was blind. When I mean by blind, he never was able to see and understand the spiritual things of God. There's people in the world that can't understand what, why we're even here today. They don't understand a person bow, bowing down and, and every knee bowing and every tongue confessing that Jesus is Christ, he is Lord, he is the Savior. They don't see that. They don't understand that. And this man, it was no difference. He didn't see it. You may have family members. You may have co-workers that just doesn't understand it. You may even say, I don't understand it. I've had people tell me, said, Preacher, I know I ought to read my Bible, but I just don't understand it. I won't promise you, I didn't understand it until he opened my eyes to where I could see and understand. It takes the Holy Spirit to do that. We had to have God to help us in that. He opened the eyes of this man. That's what he does to all lost people. He opens the eyes so we can see. This man, not only was he blind, representing the lost person, he was a beggar, begging for something that he th was looking for. There's people today that are searching for happiness. They're searching for joy. They seem to think if I had a little bit more money, or maybe if I lived in a different kind of place, or if I hung out with a different kind of people, if I, I remember my dad, was tell, he was telling me a story yesterday about how that uh, when he was a kid, he said, I, I, I now some of y'all may remember those days, he, he, his dad ran a store down here in Morgan City, and uh, he said, I'd see these guys come in, and they'd, they'd get this uh, BC powder. And they'd come in, and they'd open that B.C. powder up, and, and they'd give them a little cold, cold drink, and they would take it, pour that old B.C. powder down their throat, and they'd throw up that little Coke to chase it down with, you know? And they'd go, ooh, they'd make a face. My dad said, I was just a little boy, and I'd watch them people do that. And said, I thought I was just trying to figure out what they were doing. I thought I'd try that. He said, I snuck one of those B.C. powders out, out of the store, and I went down behind, behind the store, and I fixing it up like I seen them, and I had me a cold drink, and I was fixing to do it. That about that time, Mama come around the, uh, around the store. I said, what are you doing, boy? He said, oh, what, what, what do you mean, what am I doing, you know? He said, I got in trouble that day. He said, I never did do one of those B.C. powders. He said, I don't even know why I was wanting to do a B.C. powder. I just seen other folks do it. There's people doing a lot of things in this whole world seem to think that's what it's going to take to make them happy. But they're blind. They don't really understand what they're looking for. They just know they're looking for something. That's the way the lost people are. This man represented also the lost people because, let me tell you something, not only was he blind and begging, but he was helpless. We think, seem to think the world needs to change. The world, they can't change. They have no hope of changing. But if their eyes are open where they can see and understand, They'll make a change, won't they? There's no hope for someone they can't see. This man was a picture of a lost person. Not only that, he, the cure is a picture of how God saves people. He said he came to the man in grace. He passed by this man, and he could have easily bypassed him and not stopped and met his needs that day. But he chose to stop. He chose to help him that day. A lot of people say, well, it's a Sabbath day. You remember the story of the Good Samaritan? The man was laying by the roadside, 
the Levi, he just passed on the other side. The priest passed by on the other side. Jesus could have just passed by and said, I just don't want to mess with this guy. But he took time. Why did he do so? I believe because Jesus has time for people in need. He has time for you today. I don't know what you're going through today. It may be a financial thing. It may be a, a, a marital thing. It may be a, a, a thing with your parents. It may be a thing with your children. It may be a thing at work. It could be all different kind of things. But I assure you one thing, just as Jesus had time for this man here, he has time for each and every one of us to make a difference in our lives. If you notice, what did he do? Before he done anything, he started getting critical. Criticism. Number one, a lot of people try, we'll get into that in a moment, a lot of people try to think, figure out why was he doing such a thing on the Sabbath day. There's all kind of days you could do it. Why do it today? We may be thinking, why should I do anything today? Jesus is here. Jesus wants to make a difference. You'll notice he said, Who sinned? Who sinned? Jesus said, no one had sinned. Now, I don't believe he said, said that these guys are sinless. He said, but their sins wasn't the reason he was blind. But he said this man was blind for a reason. That is, he said, neither this man has sinned nor the, his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Think about it for a minute. Don't let me lose you. I want you to understand. He said, the situation that's going on in this man's life is so that God could be honored and God could be glorified. Preacher, you're trying to tell me I'm having a, a bad situation at work so God can be glorified? Y'all ain't seeing that just yet, are you? No preacher, I just, I, I'm just work. I, my coworker is just a, a ugly person. God just needs to strike them down with lightning. That's what really needs to happen. The whole world would be glory, uh, honored if He'd just do that. Isn't it amazing? We're going through situations, and, and we want God just to lift it off of us. That's a selfish thing, isn't it? Should be, I want God to be honored through what I'm going through. It's an honor that whatever you're going through, when the outcome is, not that I know how we get in the flesh sometimes. You know what, what we want to happen when we have a problem with somebody? We want to become out winners, don't we? We want to be winners. You think if me and Mike was arguing, you know what I'd, I'd be wanting to happen? I want him to figure out how dumb he is and how smart I am is what I'd want to happen. That's what the flesh would want. But when people come to me, especially in marriage counseling, they'll come to me and say, Preacher, can you talk to us? And when I set them down, we'll get to talking about how can God be honored. And they'll, go, they'll shake their head this way, kind of like y'all do me when I'm preaching. But when I get finished talking, they're saying, well, what does he need? To need? You need to tell him how he needs to change. We're not talking about him. We're not talking about her. We're talking about him. What's it going to take for God to be honored? What's it going to take for God to be glorified? Let me ask that question today with our lives. What's it going to take for God to be honored today? What do I have to do for God to be honored? We want us to come to church. We want to feel better about ourselves. I don't want to feel better about myself. I want people to feel better about who God is and what God is doing in my life. You know what God did to this man? He said so that God could be honored and so that God could be glorified, he went out here and he spit down here in this and made mud out of the dirt. And then he took that mud and he rubbed it on the guy's eyes. Now, if you've ever had a just one speck of dirt in your eye before, 
I mean, that's an irritating feeling, isn't it? That's irritating. I was, when a kid one time, we was out playing. We'd make, it'd been raining, we'd making mud, and we was taking, making mud balls and we was throwing it at one another. And I remember I was hiding behind the tree and I had my mud ball. And I remember I turned around the tree fixing to hit somebody, and they was waiting on me. Right on the other side of the tree, right in the face. I mean, my eyes were full of mud, sand. I couldn't see anything. I'm go crying. I go back to my grandma's house, and I'm telling my mud, mud, they had to take me to the hospital and get washed my eyes out. I'm going to tell you one thing. When, when I had sand in my eyes, I wanted to wash them out. So when the, Jesus told this man to go and wash, he was ready to do it, wasn't he? Ready to do it. Now, I'm not a kind of person, I, I've seen my wife and some of my daughters, they, they take up my eye drop, they just drop it in their eyes, just look straight up. Man, I start to drop one in there, and boy, I close it before it even gets there, you know. I don't want nothing touching my eye. But now, if you got something in there, I'm going to hold her open because I want it out of there. God sometimes has to irritate. He has to get us in a position where we're ready to get cleaned up. He kind of get got to irritate us a little bit. So he said, now I want you to understand the philosophy to this story isn't it. If you're having problems seeing, go put mud in your eyes. That's not what he's trying to say here. In fact, you can honestly say putting mud in somebody's eyes is not going to cure a lot of eyesight, is it? I have to wear these, these things right here. Y'all are a pretty fuzzy bunch of folks out there without these on. Putting mud on is not going to change it. Isn't it amazing how we'll, probably little, we'll do a lot of things to try to help our eyesight? But sometimes it comes to something more deeply than a pair of glasses. Even what it really took to be able to see, obedience is what it took. Obedience. He told him, I want you to go and wash, and that's exactly what he did. He said he went and washed in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. Now, why did he even put that name in there? Why did he even put in here in the Bible, which is by interpretation sent? To let us know what that name stood for is sent. Let me tell you something. Jesus has been sent so that God could be honored and glorified through this blind man's life. He's been sent here today. He's been sent from heaven to come down. His spirit is here today. It's been sent to us to pass by us to make a difference in our lives. And it says he went, he was obedient, he washed, and he came seeing. I'd like, you could sit here today and say, well, end of story. That was not the end of the story. That was the beginning of the story. That's the beginning of the story. When you walk the aisle, you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's just the beginning. That's not the end. Some people seem to think it's over with, it's done with. I don't have to do anything. Else. That's just the beginning. There's things they're getting hooked up into and to get involved in. Now, if you were to put things in a computer and try to Figure things out. It's not about figuring things out. It's about having faith this morning. Folks, if you were to take a computer and you were to put in here that 99% of accidents that take place on the staircase involve either the, the top step or the bottom step. 99% of accidents on the stair takes place on the top step or the bottom step. A computer would figure it out and give you the solution. Take out the bottom step and the top step. Well, you know that doesn't make good sense, does it? It don't make sense that God loves me. It doesn't make sense how God saves us. It don't make sense how you can put mud in this guy's eye and be able to see again. But I got faith that he can do it. I got faith. We talked about the cure. 
I want you to understand today, Jesus is the cure. You don't talk about the problems of the blindness. You don't talk about the problems that you may be going through, but I want to say he is the cure. Folks, we hope we all can agree today that Jesus is the cure. But we do have controversy, even with the cure. I mean, we got a lot of denominations who want to argue about how the, oh, you got to be baptized, or, or, or you got to be able to quote scripture, you got to be this way, you got to do that way. You got to go to church on a Saturday, you got to go to church on a Saturday. We can talk about a lot of different things, be controversial, rather than what the cure is, it's Jesus. What happened right after this man began to see? He said in verse 8, talking about neighboring therefore. They which before had seen him, that he was blind. They said, is not this he that was begging? People were starting to see. And they see, could see the difference that Jesus made in his life. And some said, well, he looked like him. But that can't be him. But it is. If you'll notice, it says in verse 10, it says, how were your eyes open? How? I want you to know, it's mentioned four times here in this gospel. Verse 10 and verse 15, it says it again. Then the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. It says also in verse 19, how then doth he now see? In verse 26, he says, how opened he thine eyes? Modern times, that's our question in the flesh. How is God going to do this? That was the wrong question to ask. It's not how, but who. Who is going to fix this? Who, not how. How did God save me? I have no clue, but I know who saved me. How he can forgive all my sins and, and cast it as far as, as, that it's not even known anymore. How he does that, I don't know, but I know who does that. The people are looking at the problems of how he's going to do it. I'll be honest, I was asking myself that question. If I were to walk that aisle, if I were to get baptized, if I accept him as my Savior, I'd do all those things. How am I going to live the life I always live? That was the wrong question, not how am I going to do it. Who's going to do it? He's going to do it for me. He's going to do it in me. Because greater is he that is in me that is in the world. He's going to do it. I'm not going to do it. It's not how, but who? Today, we don't need to come and say, how's this going to work? Who's going to make the difference? He's going to make the difference. There was a controversy. They, didn't want, they went to his mother and dad, and they started saying, is this? Oh, they, they didn't want to get involved because if they were to disagree with all these religious group of people, they'd lose their home. They'd be cast out. So they didn't want to get involved. You know why? They were blind. They were blind to who God is. They were looking at themselves. There's so much blindness in the world. There's so much blindness in the churches. People don't see who God is. We find the confession. They came to the man. He, he said, I, I can tell you one thing. I don't know how he did it, but I know who did it. I was blind, but now I see. I know that. He gives him the credit, and he advanced. In fact, in fact, he says in verse 11, he grew in his knowledge about who Christ was because in verse 11, he talks about a man called Jesus. In verse 17, he calls him a prophet. In verse uh, 31 through 33, refers to him as a man of God. And then eventually gets down to verse 35 through 38. He says, he is the son of God. He recognizes the power that he had. Isn't it amazing? What did the blind man see? He saw nothing until he saw Jesus. 
The family, what did they saw, see? They saw that their son was healed, but they saw what it was going to cost them, and they weren't willing to join in. They were blinded. The disciple, what did they see? When Jesus was passing by, they saw a man that was blind, so they figured out he must have sinned to be living in that condition. You may be going through some things and thinking, I must have done something terrible that I'm having to go through what I'm going through in this life. And Jesus said, no, you're going through something so God could be glorified. I've seen testimony from a man that had no arms and had no legs, but he was testifying for the Lord. You say, why did he have to go through that? It's not about him, it's about him. So it doesn't matter what you may be going through, but we're here to honor God in it. You know, a fellow preacher that had cerebral palsy, you couldn't hardly understand him when he spoke. But he was an evangelist. And his thing was, I can't even talk good. But what is your excuse? I'm still doing it. I'm still talking about Jesus. We don't let our circumstances stand in the way. Do we believe him? I like what it says in verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. We seem to think we can come to God anytime we want. I like what Proverbs says. I'm going to read a few verses out of Proverbs 123. Turn you to my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my word unto you because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hands and no man regarded. But you have said it not. All my counsel. And would not, with none of my reproof. I also have laughed at your calamity. I will mock at your fear. God said, I'm here to meet your needs. You, ref you refuse me. I can't help you. Here today, one thing about this man, he was blind but he obeyed the Lord when he passed by. I believe the Lord's here today. I believe he passes by this congregation, the people here today. And I believe he desires you. I believe he make, wants to make a difference in your life that your family notices and people that you work with, you go to school with, notices. But he says, if you won't be obedient, I can't help you. The invitation is yours. It's not how is he going to do it, but who is going to make a difference. Will he make a difference in your life today? I invite you to come to Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for everyone that's here today. I realize everybody has a cross to bear today. And I may... Listen to the devil sometime, question why I'm going through what I'm going through. But I'm reminded today through your word that it's not about me. It's about you doing something wonderful in my life. I pray, Lord, that we will be obedient to you today. Follow you as you direct us, even those that are watching from home. I pray, Lord, right now, this very moment, we become obedient because you have been sent to us today to make a difference. In Jesus' name we pray and ask, amen. If we stand together without delay, as Jesus passes by, he wants to make a difference. You come. If you need to lay it on the altar, if you need to pray right where you're at, if you need me to pray with you, you follow the Lord today. Jesus is the answer to that. You come.
you do it as Taylor, right? Amen. God is good. I appreciate each of you being here today. Appreciate the message, and I appreciate God being in our presence here today. If you're visiting with us, we honor you joined us today. It's been a great day in the Lord. Uh, also, I'd like to ask Jennifer to come, and also our daughter Taylor. Uh, they have come here today, and I want uh, Jennifer has come. I uh, want to move her membership uh, from Nature Trail uh, Church to uh, uh, Brenda Mountain Baptist Church. What is the wishes of the church? Amen. Have fun. All in favor, by lift your hand and say amen. 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 Also, I got another young lady here named uh, Taylor. Uh, she said the Lord has saved me, and she knows that she's saved and knows that she's a, a, a child of God, and God loves her. Uh, she has not been baptized, and we're praying about that a little bit, but let's be, uh, but we want to present her for baptism when she's ready. Uh, but she's, uh, so what is the wishes of our church? and her profession of faith and on the uh, motion of her uh, baptism uh, to come, okay? Have a second to that over here. Hey, all in favor of that, we're lifting you up your hand and saying amen. 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 So praise the Lord. I'm going to ask Jennifer and, and Taylor to remain up here. Amen. Let's give them a hand. for that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Folks, isn't it wonderful to be able to see people added to, uh, to the church? Not just a Brenda Mountain Baptist Church, but the church. The church. All their smiles in heaven, smiles here on earth. I want to ask you to come by and give them the right hand of fellowship. Let them know you're praying for them, that you're going to encourage them. They, that's what we need, to encourage one another. Anyone else have a word before we dismiss? Brother Mike, dismiss in prayer, and you come by after the service and, and greet them.